Hey, and thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to show you how to break external links in your real estate Excel models. Now, if you're watching this video, it's probably because you're seeing this warning when you open a workbook or some variation of this warning that says that there are links to external sources within your workbook and it asks you if you want to update those or not. And this can be a little concerning because you likely didn't uh, add those external links. Maybe you received this file from a broker and you're concerned about these links from a, a security standpoint or, and more than likely, uh, they're just annoying. Every time you open the workbook, you, you get this, this alert. You want to just get rid of, of the alert. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, the first thing, the first step I'll do is don't update. If you don't know uh, the reason or the source of, of those links, make sure not to update. And at this stage now, we need to find where those links are and remove them. Now, the easiest way to do this and step one of this process is to use Excel's built-in functionality to break these links. And we do that by coming up to our data ribbon and selecting edit links. And up will pop a edit links dialog box, which shows us the sources of the two links that we have within this workbook. And in this case, this is actually Michael's uh, basic hotel acquisition model. When he built this model, he had used some modules, some components of his more comprehensive hotel acquisition model and inadvertently left some uh, completely unnecessary links. So uh, not having the links doesn't have any bearing or impact on the functionality of the model, but there are links nonetheless. And so we're gonna clean those up today. The other thing I did is I, I created some, uh, some links to a test workbook, and that way I could show you some other areas where you'll run into these links. Now, the very first step, as I mentioned, is to simply use Excel's break link feature here within the edit links dialog box. So we, we select the link, we click break link, and if we're lucky, the link's broken. And we know that because that workbook disappears from the source list here within our edit links dialog box. So let's try the same thing with this link. Hit break link, didn't work. And again, that's probably why you're here. So you tried this already likely, and it didn't work. So the next step is, let's look at the various charts we have. Uh, and in this case, uh, I've already looked at the workbook, there's this one chart. So I select this chart and I come up to design and select data. And what I wanna look at is I wanna look at any of the, uh, the ranges that we have here. And you'll notice here we have values. Now all of these values, none of these are links. And you know if they're links because they have a location within another file. Uh, the reason they're values though is the, these used to be links to a different workbook, that test workbook that I created. And so this means that this chart now doesn't work. We can just go ahead and delete it. So that's number two. You'll wanna check your charts and graphs and see if there are any links within those charts or graphs to data on another workbook that was not intended. The third step is within named ranges. And by the way, this is the most likely reason why uh, the break link feature in Excel doesn't work. So in order to identify these, you come to a formulas, you go named name manager, and within this name manager, we have here along the left all of our named ranges and cells within this workbook. The value that that named range or cell creates, and then where it's referred to. And the, the refers to column is the key here. What we look for is any refers to that refers to a location on a, on a outside of this workbook. And you know it because it'll usually begin with kind of a C uh, colon backslash and then some uh, path within a different computer. And so all we need to do is just let's select all these, shift, hold, click, and then this select delete, hit okay. And then we go and check to see if it worked or if, or if that or that's all of the links. So we go edit links, it's still there. Check break links, still doesn't work. So we know then there are additional links and they're not just be within named ranges. They're not within actual cells because uh, the Excel break link feature breaks those. And we know it's not within a graph because we've already cleaned up the graph that we had. 
So the, the last place is conditional formatting. And these are the most difficult to find, but I'm going to show you a trick for finding them. So what we want to do is go to the first worksheet in this workbook. And in the upper left-hand corner, we're going to click this little triangle. And that will select every cell within this worksheet. And then we come to the Home tab, Home ribbon, select Conditional Formatting, and Manage Rules. And we look at the list. And this will be a list of every conditional formatting rule within this worksheet. There aren't any. So we come back up to Show Formatting Rules 4, and we select the next worksheet, Summary. And here, now we see, and unfortunately we can't increase the size of this dialog box, but what we're looking for are um, conditions, and that's within this first column, that link either to a named range that was in a different workbook or to an actual path uh, in a different workbook. And what we see is, okay, these are all just standard links within the same workbook. But here you notice, if we go edit rule, this asks, is summary C17 equal to discount rate? Now, if you recall, discount rate was a named range that we've since deleted. But it, because it's still within uh, this conditional formatting rule, Excel still thinks the link exists. And so we just go ahead and select that conditional formatting rule and click delete rule. Okay. Then we go to the next worksheet, CF summary. And look, now we have both named, uh, that's not a named range. Let's see if we have any more named ranges. Okay. We don't. So, but we do have a path. This one right here is CF summary D4 greater than whatever value is on some workbook in a different path. And uh, for that rule, we can delete. But these ones will leave because they're actually referring to this current workbook. Uh, then we go to the next worksheet, op cash flow, and hit edit. And look, it's referring to a named range that is no longer in this workbook. And unfortunately, there's a lot of these and it's referring to static as I scroll through, uh, let's see what this one is. Yeah. This refers to custom, which is another named range. So we can here delete every one of these. Now, unfortunately, Excel doesn't allow us to select multiple conditional formatting rules. If I, if I do shift click, it just clicks the next one. So I'm going to pause the video, but what I'll do is I'll go delete. Delete. I guess you can watch me as I'm doing. I just click this delete button. Delete rule. I'll get all of them. Okay, so that, that's the op cash flow. And then I move to the waterfall. And here I'm going to have to be more selective, right? Because some of these we don't want to delete, but others we do. And unfortunately, there's not any way where we could sort these. But for instance, we don't want to delete that. And we know because, again, if we open it up, this is a link to the summary tab, the summary worksheet within this workbook. You know it's outside the workbook if it's either a named range that's not currently left in the workbook or it's to a path, uh, an actual like C colon forward slash. So uh, I'm just gonna come down and I can see these. Any of them that have the C colon forward slash, I'm gonna delete. And this is where I'm gonna pause it because it's gonna take me a little bit of time to get all of these. And I've deleted the last rule that referred to a path outside the workbook. And I go, okay. And now I want to come back and check again. Data, edit links, still there. Hit break links, and it's gone. And so that those are the four steps to break links. Now, I should mention that occasionally, if you're dealing with a macro-enabled workbook, you'll run into links within a macro that has to be cleaned up. And then you got to go in, within into the VBA code, uh, developer, visual basic, and dig through those. Those are much more difficult to find because it involves going line by line through code. But in most cases, the four steps I just outlined, in fact, the break links option and then the named ranges are your two options are most, it, 99% of the time, those two things will, will take care of it for me. Um, otherwise, conditional formatting or graphs. If you have any questions, let me know. And, you know, when we share our models, 
uh, with you through Adventures in CRE, it's pretty rare that we have this accidentally happen. Um, but if you do spot this in any of our models, just shoot us a message and we'll make sure to clean up all those links and, and uh, re-upload the file. More than likely though, and I, I would say half of the workbooks that I see from brokers come with these links. Um, and it's inadvertent on their side. They didn't intend to do that, but it's quite frustrating if you're dealing with these workbooks. So I hope that that uh, tip was helpful. Uh, let me know again if you have any questions. Otherwise, uh, happy modeling. Mm -hmm.